Hi, just a quick update on my solar power system and home battery uh, storage system. I got my bill, um, my recent electricity bill, and it's $12.38. Aussie, that is. Not that Yankee rubbish. Um, but they did change my uh, plan. It was on a quarterly plan and that's how most Australians are they're on a quarterly electricity plan but because I had the new smart meter installed um, they decided eh, no nah, we're gonna change it to a monthly bill so uh, I didn't get any choice in it so that's uh, twelve dollars thirty eight for the last month and you can see that from the 20th of December to the 19th of January there 31 days so um yeah pretty darn cheap. It's almost zero, but why is it not zero? Um, that's an interesting question, which I have covered in a previous video, but I'll, I'll just go over it again and show you. Jens Schoenfeld here, who uh, follows me on X, he asked uh, the question, uh, is summer down under and you still have a monthly bill above zero? Uh, it can mean only one thing, you didn't follow the prime directive laying out a PV system, you can always fit one more panel. Yes, I can always fit one more panel, but uh, I don't think I've done, no, I haven't done a video on this yet, but if you follow me on X, um, you would have got the update that uh, my uh, Hoy Miles micro inverter system seems to have failed somehow. Those two extra micro inverters that are hooked up to the Hoy Miles two channel inverter, I stored an extra two panels on my roof into the generator port of the DI that has failed. Haven't had a chance to look at it yet, so I have no idea what's wrong. I've tried turning the DI back on off, off and in again. I've tried turning the power to the Hoy Miles back off and on again. Hello, IT. Um, and yeah, nothing. So I'm going to have to go up there and troubleshoot uh, that. So stay tuned for that video. But anyway, why is my bill not zero? And interestingly, I have been away for the last, all, all this time here. I've been away for all, I've been on holiday. So there's been nobody home here yet. You can see these little blue peaks here. Look at this, 0 0.89 kilowatt hours, 0 0.63, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, 1.11, 1 1.67, <laughs> right? So that's one, so what does that average to? Like one kilowatt hour per day or something, maybe, right? Even when I'm not there. Why is it not zero when I've got a battery storage system? Well, as I explained in a previous video, it's because of, you can see here, here is actually today's uh, usage here in, in the morning, and you can see this, uh, this consumed graph, which is that purple one, right, is actually above the brown one, which is the produced one here, but produced when there's no produced, when there's no sun, means it's being delivered by my battery, right? So it's being delivered by my storage battery overnight, because this is 12 a.m., 1 a.m., etc., right? So the sun's not up, so it's delivering the battery as if the sun is still up, right? So that's why my solar analytics monitoring system here just thinks that the sun's still up, because it doesn't know the difference whether it's coming from the, uh, the actual solar panels and the inverters or whether or not it's coming from the battery and the uh, DI hybrid inverter. So why is that? You can see that there's little peaks above here where the, cons the produced does not match the consumed. That's because of the control response loop inside the DI hybrid inverter. Any hybrid inverter is going to have this. It doesn't respond instantly. So when you suddenly turn on your EV charger or your oven or your fridge, compressor starts up, uh, for example, then uh, those those spikes in current are going to come actually come from the grid. They're not going to come from your uh, hybrid inverter. They're not going to come from your battery via the hybrid inverter. It doesn't have the control loop response time. It's deliberately slow like that for reasons. I don't know, leave it down below. If you design inverters, you don't want them to respond instantly. Um, now, of course, if you go completely grid independent, then it's it all has to come from uh, the inverter, and they might have a faster response time. I don't know. I've never looked into that. Does an off-grid inverter have a faster response time than an on-grid inverter like mine? Don't know. But uh, yeah, apparently like it's really quite slow. So those ones above the graph, unfortunately, we don't have the resolution here to really see it because the um, solar analytics is only like a five minute thing like sampling period or something. But yeah, it's that's the basic problem here and why I'm getting like a residual one kilowatt hour coming from the grid even when I'm not home doing nothing. It's because what all these spikes are here during the day 
Uh, or during the night here when we're not actually even when we're home we're not using anything at night time that is uh, the fridges and freezers the compressors turning off and on because uh, we've got three uh, fridge freezer things so that's all of them coming on plus we've got a home ventilation system that operates all night that's taking like another 100 watts now and and any other phantom power stuff so that's the night time consumption but yeah the control response loop of the battery hybrid inverter is why I will always be taking power from the grid unless I go completely off grid and that's just silly to do um, if you've already got a grid connection it's just dumb why would you it's like I'm paying a small small connection uh, charge now and as I said um, $12 a month by the looks of it is my new bill which is basically that that residual power power plus a con connection fee minus actually minus the uh, credit at the moment on $15 in credit like this because the electricity company and that I'm with also uh, not only did they change me monthly they also lowered the feed-in tariff I was getting paid seven cents which was not much uh, to feed back in my excess solar power which I do have you can see all the yellow here going negative this is all excess solar and uh, even when I'm uh, like home like at the moment we're still here um, and we're feeding in all this uh, exporting because we can't use it all we get so much power in in summertime that yeah we're feeding it back out of the grid look at that 30 <laughs> yesterday 33 kilowatt hours sent out to the grid we couldn't use it all <laughs> it was so much crazy so yeah I'm only getting paid five cents per kilowatt hour now and I'm sure that'll eventually go down to zero uh, you know I might look at different plans and stuff like that oh sorry you, you didn't see that there you didn't see that my head might have been covering that so yeah um I will never I might get a bill of zero if we have like a huge excess so uh, but I'm paying 30 cents per kilowatt hour I think for that residual one kilowatt hour per day so you know I'm basically paying 30 cents a day pretty much um, for coming from the grid and then minus whatever excess at five cents per kilowatt hour per day so yeah I'm never going to draw zero from the grid so there's always going to be the connection charge plus any residual power so there you go hope you found that interesting if you did give it a big thumbs up as always discuss down below catch you next time